Hi, my name's Hamish Seabrook. I'm the winemaker of Red Kangaroo. Welcome to the Red Kangaroo Vineyards. This is the Shiraz Vineyard for uh, Holly Mount uh, Shiraz. As you can see, the Shiraz Vineyard is getting riper and riper and riper. It's vintage time. Uh, the sugar's getting ripe, the flavour's getting ripe, and we're almost ready to pick. Vintage is a critical time of year. We really only get one go at it. So it's best to taste the grapes and by walking through the vineyard, uh, tasting each berry on each side of the row to get a good grasp and a good um, handle on how the flavours are developing. We're also looking for any disease or we're looking for any um, breaking down of the skins and we're also checking the canopies to make sure that everything's right to go for vintage. So I walk through the vineyard every day and have a taste of the grapes and when the grapes taste right enough I'll actually pick them. Decide to put a big machine harvester in here and pick the grapes um, and bring them into the winery. But we do this by taste only, we don't do this by analysis, we don't do this by numbers, it's all by taste and flavour. Once the flavour's right and the tannins taste right in the, wine, in the grapes, um, we decide to pick. That's probably the most important uh, time of the year. It's the only time of the year you get one chance at it. What I'm doing right now is I'm tasting the uh, grapes, deciding when to pick. I'm looking for flavour, I'm looking for tannin, I'm looking for good acidity balance. As you can see, the bunches are quite big, plump, full, perfect for a great vintage. I taste as many bunches and berries as I possibly can. Flavour is paramount. The best way to make wine is through flavour of the berries. So I determine when the best flavour is. I'm looking for um, balance of acidity, tannin and sugar. So when the sugar comes up, uh, we will determine, we'll work out it's ready to go and we'll bring it into the winery. As you can see the harvesters harvesting at night. The reason they do this is because it's cool and the cool of the night retains all the freshness and, of the, for the grapes and it's much easier for the harvester drivers uh, to get all their jobs done in the evenings, especially when you're crushing grapes during the day. As you can see, the harvester straddles the vines and what it does is gently shakes the grapes off the vines into the bins below and a conveyor takes them up and puts them into the tractor next door. Then the tractor gently drives over to the truck and the tips its grapes into the back of the truck. The truck then drives to the winery and delivers the grapes. It's quite a clever, gentle and genius way of harvesting grapes off a vine. The traditional way of hand picking is somewhat of a thing of the past, especially when you can harvest at night and it's cooler and it's not so hot and you're not damaging the fruit with the heat. You can tell a lot from a vine to see when it's ready, ready and ripe, ready for uh, harvesting. We also like to uh, keep getting a good um, grip on the sugar levels and the acid levels um, as they develop and, and ripen as the vines ripen. Alright. Eleven and a half. 
what's at least two weeks off, is it? Yeah, at the current weather rate. Yeah, eleven and a half again. The refractometer is a device we use to measure sugar. As you can see, I squeeze the grape onto the top of the refractometer and I can measure the sugar level in the berry at the time. This then helps us determine when to harvest the grapes. So start up, where, where do we just put it in? 45, something like that? Yeah, 45 the last row we went into. So do you want to start about there? Yeah, just to make sure we get this top, yep. top section. Row 50 and they're not then head south and okay. get a truck. And then we'll start picking an E10 as well. Yep. Same time. Yeah. And it's only... Tomorrow night. Not, won't start tonight. Start tomorrow night for uh, Wednesday delivery. Yep. Again, like I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bye. up Bye. to you. I'm going to leave it in your court. <laughs> got to make a decision. Basically, Dean, I'm to put, they say you put, you put the spray on, you're putting more water on, so the water can cause an issue. The jury's out on the spray, so, but as a manager, if we don't spray it, and they get bot... Trying to maintain it. Yeah, it's a bit I did, this year, put a little bit more water on early in the piece, especially yep. up at the top, top ends. Yep. Yeah. That's really worrying the money. This is worrying me, yeah. See what Take any time slot I can get. Um, we're only doing one crush shift. Let's say between 4 a.m. and She turned to me as if to say, Hurry, boy, it's waiting there for you. It's been a busy week, I think, Dean. And that's a consequence of the, um, the weather. Answer in there, that means it must have split. So as it, nearly you go back to the drawing board and stuff that was ready to pick, yeah. you may push out and the stuff that wasn't you may bring in depending on what's yeah. affected and what's not. Yeah. With this rain, obviously the vines take up all the water and go straight into the berries and dilutes all the flavours down. So what we're waiting for is uh, for the vine to then use that water again that's in the berries and uh, put it back into the vine and bring the flavour back. So we just have to wait until the flavours come right. I'm looking for split in the berries because once the berries get too much water in them they split open and uh, you can get disease entering through the split and once you get disease in the bunch it's all over. And how long does it generally take for the vines to the reprocess that water and beautiful weather like this it'll probably be about three days so the balance is whether you whether you put um, spray to avoid berries going to botrytis or whether you allow it to naturally happen and run the risk of getting botrytis choice you make now could uh, make or break it. Hey, just a quick one, how many tonnes did um, Adam end up getting off the rows that you picked? Ten tonne. Yep. Uh, yeah, okay. Space. Yep. So what are we doing here, Hamish? Sample so we can take it back to the winery and test the bome and Yes, and the pH. Welcome to the Tullymore Vineyard. This is our uh, A grade um, SVS vineyard. Uh, this is usually picked in about four picks. We pick it uh, Tully North and Tully South, and we break it up by east and west rows. Uh, all up, uh, this, is, this makes up the best wines that we possibly can. So, why are you tasting each one of those, Hamish? Each bunch. Just see whether, uh, well, see how the flavour develops down the row, and basically see when they're when they're tasting ready. Yep. Uh, decision on when to pick them, and uh, so if there's variation in one row, you absolutely pick the happy medium. As you can see, these are big, healthy vines down the bottom, and uh, maybe a bit leaner up the top with the cards. Mm -hmm. For some solitary company, I need
know that I must do what's right. Sure as Kilimanjaro rises like Olympus above the Serengeti. I seek to cure what's deep inside. Frightened of this thing that I've become. I think it's ready. Let's book it into the winery. Bring it in. Once the grapes are harvested, the grapes are transported to the winery on the back of semi-trailer trucks. The trucks can drive across the weighbridge where they are weighed and measured. The analysis is taken on the sugar, content of the grapes, as well as the acidity. Once all the sugar, content and the acidity has been measured, bins are taken off the back of the truck via a forklift and they are tipped into the crusher. The crusher then removes all of the stalks, leaves and other matter that is in grape. The grapes are then crushed and transported to the fermenters. The green waste is then taken away and remulched back into the vineyard. The clean grapes then ferment for five days with their skins to extract flavour and colour. The colour and flavour then produce alcohol and the alcohol is then the desirable end result. As you can see, the skins are then extracted, then pressed through a large membrane press. This press will then remove the finished wine from the skins, and the dried skins are then dumped out into the vineyard again. As you can see, there is no moisture left in them. Looking at the vines is the most critical part of my job. 